Faith, you are muted. Welcome to this afternoon meeting. Um, today we are going to be pre our presenter will be uh, Charles, uh, in engineer, our engineer who is called uh, Charles, and he's going to be telling he's going to be telling us how to how to in how to be civil engineer engineers. Uh, so our so, uh, Alicia is going to pray for us. Alicia. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all our blessings. Please that heal those who are not feeling well in hospitals and homes. Please God, help us as we're going to be meeting here. Help us so that we may understand what we're going to learn. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, <sighs> we can hand over to our presenter. Hello. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you. Uh, thank God for this opportunity. And then I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Sheps for inviting me to come and present uh, on civil engineering. And it's, uh, civil engineering is very broad, but I hope by the time I'm done here, all of you would have chosen to become civil engineers. It's, uh, I enjoy it very much. It's what I've, been, I've done. I'm, I'm a civil engineer by profession uh, now for about 14 years or so. I've been a civil engineer. Um, uh, Dr. Sheps and I come back a long way. We met each other at high school. That's when we first met and that's when I first knew him. So we've been uh, in contact, we've been friends ever since that time. So it was an honor for him to come to me and invite me to come and present on civil engineering. So I'm really glad to be here, guys. I hope you all um, get what is happening here and I hope you all uh, have a good time, okay? So I'm here with my daughter. This is my daughter, she's my firstborn. Her name is called Maita Chantel Machingura. So that is her name. So this is my daughter, she's, how old are you, okay? Uh -uh. <laughs> six. <laughs> she's six years old. <laughs> she says she's six years old. Okay, so, so okay, I'm going to project now, and then we'll go straight to the, to the presentation. Okay, yeah. guys. So all the best. Let's do this. Uh, can you see my screen, guys? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and if I do that, can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. yes. Thank you, guys. Okay, yes. so we're going to explore civil engineering. Thank you, Dr. Sheps, for reading that scripture about uh, some skilled men that are in the Bible. Uh, one thing we find out about God before I go into my presentation, when God created uh, uh, the heavens and the earth, the next thing he created were all the things that we find in the world. He created the animals, he created the creatures, he created everything. And it took God uh, five days to create the whole earth and everything that is in the earth. And then, as we know from the Bible, on the sixth day, God created uh, people. On the sixth day, God created people. He created Adam and Eve, who were the first people that uh, he would make on earth. And after God made Adam and Eve, he gave them an instruction and he blessed them. And one of the uh, instructions was that they must look after the earth that God had created. And he gave it to them and said, it's like you are, you guys are going to be the ones that rule the earth. 
They are going to look after the earth and everything that is in the world. So as people, we have a responsibility here on earth to look after the earth. You see, that is how God made it. And then also, one thing about God, God, uh, for example, I like saying that God does not give you a chair. If you ask God for a chair, he doesn't give you a chair. He gives you a tree and you must make the chair yourself. Because, that is, because God is a creator who created the world, he has put in people the ability to create things. And he, want, he loves to see us creating or making things from the things that he gave to us. So we don't really create in a way, let me rephrase that, we don't create anything because creating is what God did when he made the whole world from nothing. But what we do as people is we, we start manufacturing, we process what God has given us and we make it better. So if you want a chair, what you do is you have to take down wood or you have to take down a tree and then you create or you make let me use the word make, you make a chair for yourself. If you want, uh, so anything we want here on earth, the resources or the things that we need to use to make that thing are already here. But to do those things, God has put gifts in different kinds of people to help us achieve the things we want to achieve. So if you want a chair, you go look for a person who's called a carpenter. And that guy takes down the chair, uh, takes down a um, a tree or chops down trees and he starts to process a chair from a tree because God put a gift inside of him to make chairs. So all of us in the world have got a certain gift that we can use in the world to make this world a better place for everyone. So in my case, I am a civil engineer. That is the gift that God gave to me. And with that gift, I'm helping, as you will see when I start presenting from the slides, I'm helping a lot of people to get uh, water. I'm helping people to live in houses so that they don't live outside when it rains or when the sun is hot. We're all in our houses. A civil engineer does that. When we drive our cars, we drive cars on roads and then, uh, you know, so that we don't drive in the bushes everywhere. A civil engineer builds those roads. So it's just uh, letting you see, guys, all of us have got a gift Maybe uh, other people can be uh, a doctor. A doctor is a person who helps us if our bodies, maybe because sometimes people get sick, a doctor understands how the body works. His gift is to understand how the body works. And then he works with you, helps you to get medicine because he understands that and God put that gift inside of him. The other day I was watching uh, an architect, uh, Uncle Ify was presenting to you guys. He's an architect. An architect and civil engineers, we work very closely together, but their gift is to draw houses. They draw very nice houses. They do nice pictures of houses. And we, I will show you what we do after they've drawn houses. But all of us have got a certain gift and we have a part to play. We have a part to play um, in the world. Okay. So let's take it on now. So there are different types of uh, engineering in the world. It's not only civil engineering. Civil engineering is just one of them. And all we can say about engineers is that engineers make the world a better place. They make it a much better place for all of us. There are engineers who are called uh, aerospace engineers. These uh, design and build aeroplanes, jet fighters, rockets, spaceships, satellites, and all those things. Those are the people here that uh, they are going to the moon or things like that. So are, those are called uh, aerospace engineers. Okay, there are also agricultural engineers who help us to process our food so that uh, by the time we get food, there would have been agricultural engineers. They always look at the food to see how we can improve our foods, make them healthier, make them better, things like that. So, there are biomedical engineers who help in medicine. There are chemical engineers. And then on the far right, top right there, you see that they are what we call civil engineers, right at that spot there. And that is who I am. We also have computer engineers. These work on uh, computers and things like that. 
they are electrical engineers. These ones help us to get electricity in our homes. Uh, you know, so I'm just showing you on this slide that there are many different kinds of, uh, of engineering. And uh, while I will be talking about civil engineering, remember that engineering is also very wide. As you grow older, you will start to also have some interest in finding out about other types of engineering until you find the kind of engineering that you like. Okay, so I hope you're gonna love civil engineering like me, but if your gift is not civil engineering, you don't have to get stuck uh, in, in that place because there are many different kinds of uh, engineering. Okay, guys. So let's go straight to civil engineering. You, I'll leave it to you guys to research about other different kinds of engineering. Go and research about systems engineers, ocean engineers, mining engineers, mechanical engineers, manufacturing, there's many of them. I'll leave you guys to research about that. Let's talk more about civil engineering today, okay? So the question becomes, how do I become a, an engineer? Whatever engineering you want to study, you have to be interested in mathematics and in science, okay? You have to love mathematics and you gotta love science. When you're learning at school, and when you're doing uh, math, pay attention to what the teachers are teaching you. Let me give you a little trick about math, nah? a trick that my dad taught me. When, uh, when I was at school, uh, at primary school around your age, my dad told me that mathematics is what he called a practical subject. He said to me that students fail maths or, or children fail maths at school because they don't practice mathematics. Mathematics is something you must do every day. You must take your textbook and do 10 sums every day. Then your mind will stay very sharp. It will know numbers, you'll know how to count, and you love mathematics. You love maths. But if you don't practice maths or do maths almost every day, you are going to hate maths and think maths is hard. But maths is not hard. Math is like playing soccer. If you don't practice, then you will uh, in the, you'll end up getting um, you'll end up uh, uh, you know you you won't your skills will not develop. So you have to practice this thing. It's like a practical subject, and you have to do it constantly and practice it until you are excellent at it. Same thing with physics and same thing with chemistry. So we know maths is about numbers and the relationship their relationship with the world. That is maths. And then uh, physics is about uh, motion and is about machines and is about how the world relates to us. Chemistry is about materials, how different materials uh, are formed or, or what they are made of. Okay, so maths, physics and chemistry, or which we call maths and science, are the, two main, are the three main things that you need to be interested in or at your level, you'll call it science only. You don't know if it's physics or chemistry, but we simply call it science. So I want you guys, when you go to school, love science, love maths, ask questions about science, ask questions about maths, okay? And then uh, how it goes with, uh, until you get to university, this is uh, how it goes. Uh, First of all, you study uh, at matric level or at um, advanced level. You study maths, physics, and chemistry. Then there are two kinds of routes that you can take. You can either go and do a bachelor's degree, which takes three years. After you're done with your matric, you go and do a bachelor's degree, which takes three years. And then after doing that, bachelor's degree, you can advance it to a, what they call an honors degree, which is another one year. And afterwards, you can go, uh, uh, and then now you, can, you, are, you are an engineer. Then you must register as a professional. After you've done studying those four years of university, you then register as a professional. Okay. But some engineers go ahead and they advance their studies until they have a master's degree, and some go ahead from having a master's degree, then we'll be calling them specialist engineers, which means they choose. For example, 
engineering is so wide and you are going to learn everything. You learn about water, you learn about structures, you learn about roads, you learn about bridges, you learn about how to make all these things. But at the end of the day, you, you, you can specialize in one of them only because there are so many to do, but there's so much work in each one of them. Then you specialize in which one you want to do. In my case, I'm a water and sanitation engineer. So my specialty is to make sure people get water. You know, I make sure water gets to your house. That is what I do, uh, my specialization as a civil engineer. But others can be road engineers. They make sure people have roads. Others can become structural engineers, which means they make sure houses are built and they are strong and they don't fall. So that is what they do. So you can also go ahead and study that until you have a doctorate or a PhD, like Dr. Sheps there is a doctor, not because he, he can inject you when you are sick, but he's a doctor because he's a specialist in his field. So you can also study and become a doctor of civil engineering, just like Dr. Sheps. I'm not yet a doctor, uh, so Dr. Sheps inspires me. When I grow up, I want to be like Dr. Sheps one day, okay? <laughs> and then, <All> right. <laughs> so I can be called doctor also. So, that is the other route. Other people become what we call technicians and technologists. It's also in the field of civil engineering. Okay, guys. So that is what you do to become an engineer. So who's an engineer? An engineer is someone who is like an, you and me. They are not different from you and me. That's why you must start focusing right now, right from this time, already start focusing, start uh, thinking, I want to become an engineer, start finding out what it is about, because it's not something which is difficult. So an engineer observes the world around them. He has curiosity about the world, loves to explore our, uh, the world around them. You must ask questions, ask your teacher questions, you know, ask your parents questions about science, ask them about anything, you know, always ask questions, ask them why, uh, roads are black ask them why do we live uh, how how do why is it that houses don't fall when they are built ask questions like that and when we when you get answers to them by doing that you are developing your scientific nature you are developing the engineer inside of you okay so be curious listen when you're taught at school when they teach you maths and science listen if you don't understand find out again, go to the teacher, ask them to teach you some more. Okay. So engineers do a process that we call uh, designing. Uh, so here is how we design something because we solve problems on earth. Let's say there is no water in a certain town, people don't have water. So we ask ourselves, the first thing we do is we ask questions. We ask ourselves, what is the problem that these people have? You may find that the, the problem they have is that they don't have water, or you may find that the problem they have is that they don't have rods. They are walking in the bushes to go to the next town or such things. So you have to ask yourself, what is the problem that we want to solve? Then after doing that, you will see in the slides that are coming, engineers start to imagine the solutions that they can give to solve these problems. So that is the next thing we do. So we ask questions and then we imagine the solutions. We start thinking about solutions. How can we bring water to these people? When, uh, you know, and, and then after that, we start planning. We plan the solution. We draw diagrams, we draw pictures. You will see in the slides that are coming we start drawing out those solutions. We work, we work a lot with drawings. Then uh, sometimes we make what we call a prototype. You can see it here. We make what we call a prototype. A prototype is something, let's say for example, I want to build a bridge. I make a prototype right here in my office. I, I take some wood and I, or, or pieces of, uh, you can take anything, you can even use uh, pieces of pasta at home, which is food, but you can cut it into nice pieces or match sticks. 
And from those matchsticks, you make for yourself a small little bridge. And sometimes we do that and we test these bridges uh, before we go and build them out there for you guys to drive on with your cars. We first of all build them in our, what we call laboratories, in our labs. We build those things and we test them in, uh, while we are still at our offices. And then we test to see if they will not fall. We put, we apply pressure on them. We use toy cars also. We load those toy cars with um, soil or things like that, just to make them heavy and look like, and then we're testing to see if our bridge will work when we build it outside. Then if we are happy with that, we, we improve on it until we see the things we need to do for the bridge or the rod or whatever it is we're building for it to stand. You see, so that is the thing about engineering. Engineering is very practical. It's things that we do at the end of the day, you will see the house that an engineer builds. At the end of the day, you will see the bridge that an engineer has built. You will drink the water that an engineer has brought to your house. You know, all those uh, kinds of things. Okay. So here I'm just also illustrating what civil engineers do. They understand the problem. Let's say an architect, because civil engineers don't necessarily draw these houses. We are not artists, but architects are artists. That's why uh, when an architect speaks, they don't speak of uh, designing in the same context that in the same way that civil engineers speak about, uh, about uh, designing. Okay. Uh, when architects speak of designing, they are speaking of drawing a house, just like the house you see here. Uh, in the picture. They've drawn this big house. And after they are done drawing it, they don't know if that house is going to last or is going to stand or if it will fall on people or if it will not fall off people, on people. They are just artists. All they are good at is drawing. So after they are done drawing, they come to the guy called Charles Machingura or they come to a guy who's called a civil engineer. And they say, look, Mr. Civil Engineer, I have a very nice building that I have drawn, but I want you to make sure it doesn't fall, that it is strong, okay? A civil engineer's job is to understand materials that are used to build everything that we see around us. So we take those buildings and we do what we call the design process, where we start doing calculations, we take that building, we, we start to design it in such a way to find out if, for example, let's say it rains, is the rain going to affect that building? We ask ourselves those questions. Do you see that? Let's say it's a, there's a lot of wind. Is the wind going to push that house so that it falls? What can we do to make sure the house doesn't fall? That is the, becomes the job of an engineer. So engineers find solutions. They do designs and they do drawings. Okay. Then uh, we've got, after that, we also start constructing. Construction is what we do when we start, uh, we, when we start building, when we start building uh, the, the houses that we would have drawn. You can see here in the third picture on my far right, uh, I hope you can see my cursor from my mouse there. That is an engineer now doing construction. So there are three things we do. We understand the problem, we find solutions and we do designs and drawings so that the solution will last, and then we go ahead and start building those things. Those things are done by a civil engineer. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Now, there are some key words that I just want to share with you guys, a few words that you need to understand uh, about engineering. Uh, a project is, is uh, the work that an engineer must do. So, any, any work that an engineer must do, we call it a project, okay? So let's say, uh, and the project has four things about it. The first one is called what we call the scope of work. What is it that you want the engineer to do? For example, we might want to build a road, 40 kilometer length road, which stretches from Johannesburg all the way to Pretoria. An engineer now defines that as the scope of the work and he has to say, okay, so my scope of work in this project is to build a road that goes from Johannesburg all the way to Pretoria and it will be 40 kilometers. 
you see the next thing we're concerned about as engineers is how much will it cost to do that project okay so engineers not only think about what work must be done we also think about how much is it going to cost us to build that work how much is it going to cost you i can tell you if you come to me and say uh, engineer charles i want to build a house i will i can do for you i'll understand okay what kind of house do you want to build how big is it going to be and then i can start calculating for you and tell you how much it's going to cost you to build that house the next thing we're concerned about is how much time will it take to build that house we don't just build things without thinking how long it takes okay guys we don't just build forever every project if you see people working on the road they have a certain time to say ah maybe they have three years to build that house or they have two years to build that uh, that road or things like that every project must have a defined time do you get it mate okay i hope you guys are getting it also that side and then the last thing is how good the work is going to be the quality of the work we don't want a road that you build today and next week you can't use that road or you build a bridge and next week that bridge is going to fall on people sometimes it falls on people and some people it hurts people and things like that an engineer must make sure whatever work he does the work does not damage does not you know kill people it does not hurt people people are safe around what i build if I build a house, the house must not fall, whether it rains, whether there's a tsunami, whether there's an earthquake, that house must not fall. A good engineer makes sure everything he builds does not easily, easily get damaged unless things are very, very, I mean, it become very, very dangerous. Okay, then afterwards we do what we call designs. As you saw in the last slide, we talked about the process of design. And then afterwards, we do what we call construction. Construction is us building the work that we have designed as civil engineers. If you guys have questions, remember to shout or something. Okay, I can't see you raising your hands though while I'm presenting for now. So there are different kinds of civil engineering. Marco is a question. So we usually take questions after you've finished presenting. But you can okay. ask Marco to ask. Okay, Marco, you can ask for now, and then the rest of the guys you can ask later, okay? Let's have your question, Marco. Um, I don't quite get what a prototype is. A prototype. Okay, there's a slide which is coming on uh, later on, okay? And in that slide, you're going to see what a prototype is. I'll show it to you, okay? So will you be patient and wait for your prototype? Thank you, Marco. So guys, there's a prototype of a bridge which is coming. I'll show you what it looks like, okay? So give me uh, one moment and you'll see it now, now. Okay. Um, so we were here now talking about different types of civil engineering. We have what we call water and wastewater engineering. Water and wastewater engineering is uh, what I do, like I told you. That's why it's first there in that line, because I'm a water and wastewater engineering. I'll also explain later to you what it's about. Then there's what we call structural engineering. It's still a civil engineer. So you can find a person is called a civil engineer. When they tell you that I'm a civil engineer, ask them, what is your specialty? Or ask them, what do you do in civil engineering? The other one will tell you, I'm a water, engineer another one will tell you i'm a structural engineer another guy will tell you i'm a transportation engineer these are the guys who design roads and highways all these roads we see around us there are civil engineers who design roads and transport systems they are called uh, transportation engineer they design airports and things like that so they are all part of what we call transportation uh, engineering then we've got what we call geotechnical engineers these are guys who deal with the soil. Because whenever, let's say you're building a house, you don't just build a house anywhere you like. You first must find out the kind of soil that is in that place. Okay, you find out the kind of soil that is in that place. 
and when you found out the kind of soil that is in that place, you find out if it can be able to uh, sustain what we call to sustain a building, which means it will be able to hold, or, or rather, when you build that building, that building will not fall, or, or it will not sink into the ground, things like that. So a geotechnical engineer is responsible for making sure that the ground where you're building is suitable. The ground where we are putting in, like, okay, let's say we want to build a pipeline to take water to the people. We want to know when I am building my pipeline to take water to the people, will I pass through a place which has a lot of rocks or is the soil just a, a good sandy soil? Things like that. So as a geotechnical engineer, who is also a civil engineer who specializes in understanding the soil and rocks and things like that. He is the one who tells us those things. Then there, is, there are guys whom we call urban planners who are in civil engineers, but their specialty is what we call urban planning. So when you go into town, let's say you go into Jobek town, you will see that Jobek town is a certain way that it, is, uh, it has been uh, planned. You will see that the roads go in one direction all of them are, you know, they, they are not just, houses are not just built anywhere. They have a certain nice structure that they are built around. They, those are the guys who plan that town. They are called urban planners, but they are still civil engineers. Then we have guys who do what we call environmental engineering. Okay. Environmental engineers deal with the environment. They make sure that while you're building, remember, whenever we build in a certain place, before you build there, you might find that there is a bush. So you have to, we need environmental engineers. They come, they investigate that area to make sure if there are animals living there, are the animals safe? They take away those animals. Sometimes there are elephants when you go to a place, there are snakes, they are, think of any wild animal. Every place you see now where we have buildings used to be a bush. And in that bush, it used to be to have wild animals. It used to have, uh, maybe there was a river and there were birds uh, also. There were fish in the river. There were birds flying around in the air, all living in those trees that you want to remove. We don't want to be people that are careless but when we build the world around us, we also must make sure that the world remains a good place for other, uh, the animals that God also created. Okay, guys. So animals are our friends. Animals are what God created. Remember, God gave us the responsibility to look after these animals. So if you cut down a tree, you must know where are the birds going to live? Where are the monkeys going to live? So environmental engineers are worried about those things and they make sure that while we build the world around us, we don't destroy the world around us. We just build it safely. Then we have construction engineers. These deal with uh, construction. Okay, so let's look a bit at uh, what we call uh, water engineering. I'll start here on water engineering. Do you remember the water cycle? I don't know if you guys remember what we call the water cycle. Do you remember the water cycle? So in the yeah. water cycle, we yes. need to understand that nice one. That's a good one if you remember, guys. So with the water cycle, you must remember that water is not, God created the world once and he created water once. All the water that we are using right now is the same water that has been around in the world. That's why it is so wrong for us to waste water or to throw uh, rubbish into water to pollute our water. We mustn't do that because we only have one water. Let me put it like that. I know the English sounds weird, but there is no other water that will come from another planet or anything. Water keeps going round and round in a cycle that we call the water cycle. Okay, so water evaporates from the earth. Uh, when it evaporates from trees, we call it transpiration. When it evaporates from anywhere else, we call it evaporation. And then it rises up to the sky where it forms clouds. And the sun is the one that helps the water to evaporate. So if you have noticed, 
whenever you, water is boiling, it goes up mm -hmm. into the sky and sometimes it goes up as steam. That water is going up and with time, in the end, it will form what we call clouds and in a process that is called condensation. And when water is formed in the skies, it will come down as rain in what is called precipitation. So that is rain and sometimes there's snow and all those things, okay? So when it falls down and it comes down, it runs down our rivers and sometimes it goes down into the ground and things like that. But we need water and water must be clean and pure when we use it, okay? So that is what we use as, a, as, a, as engineers. We now use that, uh, we, the, we civil engineers, we make a process to make sure that people get good, clean water when they get it. Okay, so this is the water cycle. It's very important as water engineers, we depend on the water cycle. We need to know the times that water comes to the earth and we need to know uh, when it comes. Okay, now let's look at uh, water engineering. What is the process that a water engineer goes through? Okay, so at first of all, let's say you're building a town. Before even a town is built, you can come and call a civil engineer and you ask the civil engineer uh, what is going to be, to be built uh, in that place, what we, we do is we come and understand there's going to be a town in this place and then we do what we call a, a water demand analysis. We, we count the number of people that are going to live in that place. We find out, for example, what industries are going to be in that place, what activities. You know that everything we do in this world requires us to use water. You guys know that, right? So water is very, very important. Every, there's nothing we can do without water. That's why sometimes if uh, at your house, let's say there's, a, there's no water, it becomes a problem. If let's say there's a, no water, let's say there's been a problem somewhere, a pest pipe somewhere, and no water is reaching your house, then life becomes miserable for people because we cook, when we cook, we use water. When we bath, we use water. You know, when every other time we drink water, I just ask my eater to go fetch me some water right now because I'm feeling thirsty already. Every time when we live in the world, we're always using water. But have you ever thought where that water comes from? So a water engineer is the one who makes sure that people in the world have got water. So the first thing we do, we always do, we always identify the water source. We find out in the area that is around us, is there a river which is there? Is there a river which is there where we can get the water uh, so that we can start, uh, and then we start the process of making sure people get water, you see? And all the communities must are built around a place where there is water. Okay, guys. Now, in the next thing we do after finding out a water source, let's say it's a river. I'm talking about a civil engineer who is a water engineer. The next thing he finds out after finding out about, let's say, a river, and then we do a process that we call water abstraction. Here, we put pumps in place and we start taking water from a river. This is just a river. This water is not clean at all. Okay, guys. Any river we can is now here and we want to So this is just water. The river, the water in the river is not clean. Animals drink from that river, goats, pigs, cows, rhinoceros, elephants, monkeys, <laughs> anything you can think of. They all drink. And don't forget leopards. Leopards cheetahs, think of everything. They all also drink from this same water in the river. And this water is not clean, but we take it and we build what we call pump stations, where we take the help pump station. Pumps are those things that help us to push water up 
and we push the water up into what we call a water treatment works. A, we, a water treatment works is what we design to clean the water. It's a long process, I can't explain it today, but that is what I do also as a water engineer. I take the water from the river, which is dirty, and I clean it. You guys will remember that if you drink dirty water, you get sick. You know that, right? Because James like living in that water. You know, so it's not only us who use that water. So we take that water as civil engineers, we clean that water for you in a process that we call purification. We purify that water, we make it pure, we make it clean. We, it, like water in a river will, will be having color, soil, everything. We take out everything which is dirty in that water until the water is crystal clear, until it's clear like this water here that I have. Then when we've cleaned that water, we can pump it up into a place called a water storage reservoir. A reservoir is just a big tank made of concrete. And because engineers work together, I don't, uh, uh, I, I will not only build the, I will not build the concrete tank myself. I will need a structural engineer to help me build the concrete reservoir or concrete tank or water storage tank, whichever you prefer to call it. We build a tank Sometimes if you guys have noticed uh, when you're driving around, you will find that on top of a mountain, there is this big thing which looks like this reservoir here. That is a reservoir for water. It stores water for the community. Then uh, it's clean water that would have been pumped from a water treatment works. And then afterwards, we pump, uh, uh, we allow that water to flow. We put it on top of a mountain because we want it to flow by what we call gravity, which means we don't, we, sometimes we avoid using pumps again. We let the water flow all the way down. You know, water follows the earth when it flows. If, if it goes in the direction that is uh, sloping downwards. So water flows, we create, then the next thing we do, we make or create pipelines. Then these water pipelines, we connect them. Remember, we're close to the river. And then from the river, water is pumped up. It's pumped to a treatment works. It's cleaned. It's stored in a storage reservoir. And then from the storage reservoir, we use pipelines to pump the, to, to transport the water or to make sure the water reaches your homes. Then you guys use the water at the end. So next time when you use water, just remember, uh, engineer Charles Machingura made sure this water comes to my house. Okay, guys. And engineer Charles Machingura made sure the water is not uh, dirty so that I don't get sick, so that people don't get sick. Okay. So that is what uh, water engineers do. And then the other component that we do is what we call wastewater engineering. The next thing that we do is called wastewater engineering. In wastewater engineering, remember you guys uh, at your houses, you have bathrooms, you have got toilets, you've got all those things in your houses. But have you ever asked yourself the question, what happens when I flush the toilet? Or I've finished bathing and I lift that plug, where does the dirty water go? Does it come back to my tap so I can drink it? No, because it's already dirty. If you drink it, you become ill. So what do we do? We, do, we build a different kind of pipe system again, or pipe network again, which is for what we call sewer, or what we call wastewater, or the water which is wasted, which means we don't want to use it again. It's water we are throwing away. It goes into a different pipes. So whenever you see a town, you must know that underground, there are two kinds of pipes that are underground everywhere in any town. There are pipes that bring us clean water and then there are pipes that take away the dirty water. Okay, guys. So those are the two types of pipes that are there. And even at your house, there's a pipe that brings in clean water to your house and there's a pipe that takes away the dirty water. And a civil engineer has a responsibility or his job is to make sure that those pipes are there and that people's uh, water 
is kept clean and that the dirty water goes away from people. It does not make people ill. Okay. So uh, we pump the water away using pipes or, or rather when you open, your, when you flush your toilet or when you drain your, your tub after bathing, the water goes into pipe, a pipe network. And sometimes it goes to what we call a pump station for sewer because it's now what we call sewer, which means the wastewater that we no longer want, okay? And then we pump that water away to what we call a sewer treatment works. Again, I will not go into details to explain, but you can see here at the bottom left, I'm showing you here the, uh, the process of a sewer. You guys can look at it later. It shows the process of what happens until the water is cleaned again. But you must know that, let me tell you a secret now that maybe you didn't know, some of you, when we have cleaned that water, we pump it, after we've cleaned it, we make sure it doesn't have diseases again. We've removed all those solids that you flush down the toilets, the rubbish you throw down the toilet, everything, the dirty water, we take it again, we clean it. Remember the environment. We clean it so that it's environmentally friendly. It's, it's, a, it's clean again. And then we load it back to the nearest river again. So water starts in the river. Remember in the previous slide, we said, remember in the previous slide, I showed you that we take water from a, a, so, a water source, which is a river. And now I'm, I'm showing you that at the end, after we've cleaned the water, we take it back again into a river. So guys, we must always try to make sure that we don't uh, make water dirty or we don't destroy our rivers by throwing things in the river. Some people go dump things in rivers. It's very wrong because it makes our water very, very dirty. It becomes very expensive to clean the water and when it becomes very expensive to clean the water, what we do as engineers, we charge your parents because they have to pay for water. If you ask mom and daddy, they will tell you that they pay for the water you guys drink every month. That's why you must save water. Don't just leave the tap running, water just wasted. You, do, you mustn't do that. You must think like a civil engineer, okay? Don't waste water. When you brush your teeth, don't brush your teeth the whole time and the tap is open and it's just going, wow, the water is just wasting away. It's not being used, but it's going to join the sewer water. Yet it's clean water. Open the tap, put water in a cup, brush your teeth nicely, rinse your mouth, and then spit out the water. And then the tap is closed all that time. You're saving water. Okay, guys? So that uh, it doesn't become a long process to give water to the people. Okay, the last part about civil engineers is civil engineers also build, uh, they also build, they also build what we call dams. Dams are like big reservoirs, but this time, this uh, reservoir, remember I showed you a picture of a reservoir where I said after we clean water, we put it in a reservoir, which we build with concrete. But this reservoir is different. What we do uh, on a dam, maybe you guys have seen uh, a dam, one or two dams. What we do at a dam, we identify a river. And every year, like uh, let's say in South Africa, we know that around summertime, we're going to have lots and lots and lots of rain. And remember, we get all our water from rain. Ne? So what we do is we build a wall at a, a river to stop the water uh, from um, to stop the water from uh, um, to stop the water from flowing away or getting wasted, we build a dam. We build a wall, and that wall will will uh, is just to make sure that water is kept um, for a, we stop the water for a moment. We use that water either to take it to purify it, like I've already uh, described to you or we use that water to create electricity in what we call a hydropower plant. The electricity that you get, uh, there are different methods of making electricity, but one of the most uh, efficient ways of making electricity for the people is in a process that we call a hydropower plant. 
which is built on a dam. Okay, you can see in my picture here, on the, in the picture in the center, there's a lot of water falling there in that dam. The dam is that wall there that we have built there, arcing across this river. The reservoir site is this one here where the water is stored, this site. And then we built here the dam. When we built the dam, you can see water falling down in a powerful force. As it falls down in a powerful force, it hits certain turbines. We call them turbines. And when it hits those turbines, they start going round very fast. When they go around very fast, they create electricity. And we take that, elect an electrical engineer takes that electricity and makes sure it reaches your house. Okay, guys. So civil engineers help us also to get electricity in our houses. Okay. They help us also. Yes. Okay. Dr. Charles, you are muted. Okay, I'm here, guys. Okay, so I was saying uh, we were on dams, ne? There are different kinds of dams, and these dams transport, uh, transport water around, or, or rather they keep the water that we're going to transport to your houses. You guys clean it and transport it to you, and also uh, there to form electricity. Okay, so that is it about uh, water engineering. And um, uh, there's so much to learn about these things. Um, I think uh, as time allows, let me ask uh, Dr. Sheps. Dr. Sheps, shall I proceed to structural engineering or Are, uh, are we still okay? We're in your hands. I don't know how much time you have. So if if you want to no. finish it off next week, it will be fine. If you want to finish okay. it. Okay. No, if everyone is still fine and saying they're still interested, I can proceed. I can speak the whole night. I don't mind. But I don't I'll, want to bore you guys. <laughs> you guys, tell us. I'll speak proceed. the whole night. I'll go. <laughs> um, Uncle, no, what? we'll continue next week. We'll no, continue next week. Now. No, proceed. I'm tired. I seem tired. No, I'm not okay. tired. Yeah, proceed. because there's so, much, there's so much to talk about. Ne? Now, let's do it this way. Ne? I've spoken to you guys. I've introduced. Let me speak one more time about structural engineering. Structural engineering is short. So I've told you about a civil engineer. And I've taught you about water engineering. Ne? Let me speak to you about a structural engineer because they work together. And then afterwards, we ask questions. The next time or in the other week, we're going to talk about roads engineers and bridge engineers and all those things. OK, is that fine? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uncle, fine. Okay. Sometimes may be trouble for salmon because every day they go to the so every year they go to the lakes and rivers where they were born, but the dams keep on blocking the way. Okay, they choose a yeah. path. The path, yeah. That can is I, why. Can that the is river why. make the, Can the river make the sea, like from the river and uh, making a sea? Yes. All rivers lead to the sea. And then to answer what Maka was talking about as well. Uh, yes, sometimes it's a problem. But remember, I said there are those guys we call uh, environmental engineers. Ne? And like I said, uh, environmental engineers are there to make sure that uh, when the environmental engineers are there to make sure that before we build a, a, a dam, we must make sure that the lives of fish will not be affected. 
So they try to come up with methods of, sometimes they take away some of the big fish and whatever. They try to have methods of saying, how is it going to be managed so that these fish do not die in that sea? So it will not be 100% accurate in that you can save all the fish, but sometimes they try their best to make sure that they save the wildlife or the life in the water out there. Okay, I was I was and then uh, I, was saying, I was saying that if the sea, if the, the fish cannot survive in the sea, they need to go to like to the river again because the sea has salty water, so they cannot survive there. So they need to go back to the river. To the river, yeah. Okay. Uh, let uh, uh, there are I different think kinds I can of answer fish. that question. You want to? Um, I want to try. You want to try to answer? Well. Uh, Salmon don't really stay in the water, salty water for long. They just stay in there for a for a year and then they go back to fresh water. I okay. Think. Yeah. So there are different this show I watch every day. Mm -hmm. Some these are questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what happens? Uh, uh, and Maka Maka. What happens is that there are different kinds of fish. There are fish that we call freshwater fish. Those ones cannot live in salty water. And then there are also some fish that we call uh, saltwater fish. Those fish can live in the sea all their life. They actually live in the sea. So there are different kinds of, of fish like that. So you find that whales and sharks are not freshwater fish because they only survive in salty water in the sea or out at sea. Okay, guys. So well, is these things are things we get concerned about before we build a dam to find out how is life going to be preserved when we build a dam. Um, Marco? The way? My dad's computer um, lost battery, so I never got to see the... the um, the slide about the prototype. prototype. The prototype. Okay, let me show you the slide about the prototype. Ne? Let me show you the prototype right now. Uh, I have a, I want to say something. I'll show you now what a prototype looks like. Prototype. I was saying that I was saying that if if we take the fresh water into the salty water it will die and if we take the salty water in the the salty fish in the fresh water it will die exactly a whale is in fish it's okay can you see can you see on this slide here mm -hmm. is it clear yeah. yeah. Uh, nice. On this slide here, ne, this is uh, when we will be talking about bridges. Do you see that uh, the first diagram on the far left is just a design calculations, how long uh, the length is measuring the length of this bridge, things like that. Ne? And then in the center, do you see that in the center there is a bridge, but it's on a table? Do you see that? So this bridge here, you can see even the back of, his, uh, of an engineer there. That's an engineer who has made this bridge. He made a, what we call a prototype. So which means he made this bridge out of wood or she made this bridge out of wood. I think it's a lady. She made this prototype of a bridge out of little pieces of wood so that she has uh, a, the picture of the kind of bridge that she's going to make out there. And in the last picture, you see the real bridge when it is made, what it really looks like. But the prototype is the one in the center here. So a prototype is like a, a model. We call it a model, that's the other word for it. It's like a representation of the real thing that you're going to build, but that you build with your own hands. It's a, small, uh, it's a smaller version of the thing you want to build. It's a smaller thing of the real thing you want to build that you make in your own house 
and then you can use Many it to bridge. test and see if the prototype works. So you can learn lessons from the prototype. You can learn to see, am I, the parts of this bridge going to connect nicely? How are people going to work around them when they start building the real thing? The prototype will be able, because you now have a nice, nice picture about the thing you want to build on the prototype. You can be able to find out, okay, it is going to be very hard to work at this section of this bridge and this section, what will I need? You know, those things. That is the purpose of a prototype. It helps you plan your work nicely. Okay, so I, I hope you see it, uh, Marco. That's the, that's the prototype uh, right there, a picture of the prototype right at the center. So it's basically a middle model. It's basically a middle model. That's right. Of the thing you, of the thing you're gonna make. That's right. Oh. Precisely that. Whoa. Was I sharing my screen? Yeah, it was sharing. Okay, great. I was worried that maybe you guys were not seeing. Okay, so that's the prototype uh, right there. I'll take uh, more questions, guys. Hello, uh, Tunodaisha. You're muted. You're muted, Tunodaisha. I can't hear you. I was thinking, what does a prototype mean? Prototype, uh, like, um, like uh, Marco said, it's a it's a model. Prototype means model, or it means uh, uh, what's the best way of putting it? It means uh, a type of the real thing that you want to make. So it's just a model. It's something you make in your own house. So you have learned a new word today. You must write that word down. Every week, every day, this week, hook around saying prototype, prototype, prototype. You know what I mean? Till people think, what, what are you? Tell them you're a civil engineer. Okay, guys, are there any more questions? Marco? My dad is an engineer, but I forgot what type he is. Okay. Yeah, you must ask him what type he is. Where is okay. You must come and tell us. <laughs> Really? Where is he? Uh, in his bedroom. Yeah, he should come and tell us. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Next week. Uh. Okay, guys. So that is it about water engineering. I think the main thing we discussed today is water engineering. And... Um, is there something new? Does anyone want to uh, mention something new that they learned today or something that was of interest to them? Tell I me something. The water from the sewer actually comes back to... <laughs> the water from the sewer. Hey. Yes, sir. At the end, all the water, that's why uh, when we started, we said all the water is the same water. You see? We said all the water is the same water. So we take water from the river, we purify it, we make it clean, and then after we've cleaned it, we give it to the people to drink and, and to bath with, to wash their plates. When you flush it, we take that water again. We clean it and we purify it, and then we take it back to another river, uh, back to the, sometimes it's even the same river that you took the water in the first time. So it ends up in the river again. And remember, rivers flow, sometimes they flow all the way from one town to another. So the next town is using the same water that we have uh, discharged from our own uh, sewer treatment works. So it goes again to another town, they take that water, they clean it again, and they, after they've cleaned it, they give it to the people, people use it, it goes back to the river again. So that is how we work. So mistakes okay. do happen sometimes, but uh, in, in, in cases of either mistakes or laziness or malice, 
engineers came mm. getting uh, dirty water into the system. Yes, that has happened uh, a lot of times. Right now, there is a case uh, of the Val River. The Val River is one of the biggest rivers in South Africa. But the Val River water is so polluted, it's not even funny. It's really bad, you know. So the Val River water is polluted, and um, the, we are all trying to find methods of solving that problem because we have a very, very serious problem with the Val River. And uh, it sometimes happens that there's carelessness. But as engineers, we've got um, guidelines that we use. We test our water in labs to make sure to find out what exactly is in that water before we purify it. And we try to clean it. But sometimes uh, what happens is, remember, I can design, I can come to a river and find out, I, I test the water. I take samples of that water. I don't do it in one day. I can take months and months collecting water, finding out what kind of impurities are in that water. Then we come up with solutions to treat it. Then someone comes and builds their own factory, which makes plastic or manufacturing or washes dye and you know all those things. Or an abattoir where it's going to be killing animals to sell meat to people and then bloody water from those animals that is slaughtering to give meat to people ends up in that river. But in my design, when I did my design first time, I had not designed for that kind of water. So there's a new kind of impurity which is in the water, which may not be covered by the treatment works. So the government, what it does is make sure that you don't build your new thing or new factory or new whatever without consulting the government because they need to make sure that the water can still be purified so that we avoid the kind of mistakes uh, that Dr. Sheps is referring to. I have a question. Okay, is that Azel? Yes. Okay, you can ask Azel. Let's say you built a big hotel. Okay. How do you measure it? How do we measure it? Yes. Um, okay, you mean like measure how many people are going to live in it or? Okay, that is the kind of way we would measure it. If you want to measure build a hotel. how big the building will be. Okay, yeah, you can decide. It, it's up to you as the one who wants to build the hotel. You can decide to say, I want to build a hotel that is going to, I want to host, I want to have how many rooms? Let's say you want to have 300 rooms for guests to come and live in that hotel. So you then go to an architect and say, Mr. Architect, I want to build a hotel because I want to host people. The architect will draw it nicely for you. He'll use his art and ask you questions. Do you want it to that have floors going up or do you want it to just be on the ground? You know, all those things. And after he's done doing that, he takes it to the civil engineer to design it for you. So you are the one who decides the size that you want. If you want a, a house with five bedrooms or you want a hotel with 300 rooms, you decide that, that and we help you to build it. And all we have to make sure is that you have enough land to build that same building you want to build on. Okay. Because you can't build a 300 bedroom uh, building on a land that can be fit only a five bedroom house. You see what I mean? So you need the right land to build the right building. Thank you. Okay. I see. And Mar Marco. Is it Marco? Is it Marco Borero? Okay. Go ahead. You are muted, uh, Marco. What happens if like you're purifying the water, but then it accidentally like all the bacteria and stuff hasn't yet come out like and then you give it to to another house but the water isn't actually um purified what's gonna happen you know those are really really rare rare things uh to happen uh, it's very rare to hear that water is impure because you know what we do every treatment works 
has also got has also also has some guys that we call lab technicians every day in the morning in the afternoon and in the evening they are always taking samples of the water and testing it every single day so every day we manage the water to make sure it's still clean every day when we're purifying that water we're testing that water so there is no way you are going to get water which is not clean because the moment we can realize that the water is not clean we stop we'd rather stop giving you guys the water and tell you that there's been a, a water cut sometimes that's why you hear that guys you won't be having water on saturday there are things that they're going to fix sometimes it is those things but in our designs we always make sure that you guys are not going to get water which is not clean but sometimes when i when there's one time when, well, before we had the drought my brothers and i were taking a bath but when we took part of the water out it was like a bit brown mm. <laughs> that happens <laughs> <laughs> that happens. It's rare. I don't deny it. Sometimes it happens. And sometimes it depends. Where were you when that was happening? It was still in my house. Where is that house? Which uh, 63 Ribbon Crescent, Summer Strand. <laughs> okay. So sometimes that kind of thing happens when the water is, uh, comes out not clean. But the moment you see that happen, you must quickly report it to the city council and tell them that I opened my tap and brown water came out. Because that is the water, clean, clean water must be colorless. You know that, right? It must be pure water is colorless. It's like, it's like that. It's colorless. That is pure, clean water. So you guys, uh, the moment you see water not being pure or anything inside the water when you open a tap, unless your cup is dirty, then you must wash your cup. But if your cup or glass is clean, there must be nothing in that water. You must report it immediately to the city council. Then they will correct it immediately. Water is very, very important. It must be clean because people can get really sick. I have a question. <sighs> is that Alicia? Yes. Okay, Alicia. What is the employment status in civil engineering? Good question. Right now, <laughs> Right now, engineers are in demand uh, everywhere. In South Africa, they even have a shortage of civil engineers. In Australia, as we speak, they're trying to get engineers who are in South Africa to go to Australia. In New Zealand right now, they're also trying to get civil engineers to go there. So engineers, let me tell you something. As long as people drink water, you will need a civil engineer. And everyone drinks water every day. Am I right or am I right? I'm right, yeah. right? So as long as people are alive, they will need a civil engineer. As long as people are alive, even also you see that all these pipes that we build to bring water to you guys, they get old and they need to be replaced. A civil engineer is needed again, is needed again to make sure that those pipes are replaced. So you always need a, a civil engineer. So civil engineers are in demand every day okay i see uh midterm. i answered alicia yes i have another question okay before we move on to midterm, you can ask as a structural engineer is it possible to do two things yeah you know when you go to school to university now, they are going to teach you everything they will teach you structural engineering. They will teach you water engineering. They will teach you environmental engineering. They will teach you roads engineering. I can design all those things right now as I speak. I can design a railway line. I can design a road. I can design a structure. But there's a statement that we say that if uh, we say that uh, jack of all trades, master of none. The problem with life is that if you are focused in pursuing everything around you at the same time, you'll end up not being good at everything. Do you understand what I mean? So you must be able to, while we know all these things, it's important that you choose one or two things that you can specialize in. So yes, you can, if you are very smart, you can choose to specialize and say, 
two things. You can choose to say, I want to be a structural engineer who is also a water engineer. But when you study those things, you'll see that studying wastewater engineering of designing wastewater itself is a lot of work. Studying water engineering of bringing water to the people is a lot of work. And then now you want to add on to study buildings and dams. It's a lot and lot. You can take years to do that. So it's possible it can be done, but it will take you a lot of time. Thank you. You've helped me with my project. Chap, chap, Alicia. I hope you do well in that project. Thank you. Metembe. Sure. Metembe. How long does it take for you to clean the water? Um, good question. Yes, very good question. Okay, it, uh, it depends on how big the... Okay, what we do is, remember I told you the first thing we do is we do what we call a water demand. A water demand is a calculation that we make to find out how much water people need. So if I find out to say people need 24 million liters of water per day, it means that every day I must clean 24 million liters of water. Do you get, do you get that? So it depends on the size. So it takes me a day to clean enough water for the whole community. Every day I must clean enough water for the whole community every day. We even measure our water like that. We measure our water based on the amount of water that is used in that town. So if the city of Jobek needs, let's say, 100 million liters of water a day, it means that every day we must clean 100 million liters of water. I don't know if that answers you. But in a smaller town, you might find that they just need uh, how much? Yes. Maybe they just need 100 liters per day. So we also clean for them 100 liters per day. So it depends on the size of the community. But also, what, what is the role of um, events that happen in terms of changing your water, the amount of water that you distribute to people? For instance, did anything change since March up to now in terms of water that goes into the houses and water usages? Because we're locked down, we're working from home. Uh, is there any difference between a normal year and an abnormal year like this one in terms of uh, water usages and the water that you have to pump into the system? Okay, that's a very good question, yes. So what happens when we do our water demand as engineers, we don't just calculate the amount of water that people need immediately for today only. We even look into the future. When we plan our water, we design for, for 20 years. I project, I look back every census, a census, you know a census, when they come and count you guys in your homes and find out how many people there are yes. in your home. Until we know how yes. many people, yes, thanks, thanks Nathan until we find out how many people are there in that whole country or what, or in a whole town. So a census tells us, but we can go back, let's say a census is held every 10 years. So we have records every 10 years that show us how our town people, how the numbers of people have been increasing. So we would do what we call a projection. In that projection, we look into the next 20 years or 30 years and say, at the rate this town has been growing, it looks like in 30 years time, there'll be so many people. Then we design our water systems for the next 30 years. So that once I'm done, finished uh, doing the water treatment works, it can give water to people for the next 30 years at the rate that we think that town will be growing by. So to answer your question, Dr. Sheps, what I'm pointing at is there will always be enough water because when we design that water, there is excess water that we design for, you see? So there's excess water. And also in a situation where some water has been, um, in a situation where some water has not been, I mean, uh, like in a lockdown situation, like you see that uh, uh, in a lockdown situation, people were now concentrated in their homes. So most of the water became domestic water for usage in the homes. But before that, remember, factories were open. Some factories are manufacturing things and things like that. Those factories were also closed. So water uh, that uh, was no longer concentrated or was no longer being distributed or supplies to factories. It was now going to the people. But 
most of the time there is usually enough water unless they fail to plan. If you remember a few years ago, I think two or three years ago, we had a serious problem in Cape Town because there was a drought and then suddenly the water in Cape Town was not enough. Do you remember that, guys? The water in Cape Town was no longer enough. That is because uh, they had failed to plan. You must always, every year, we must always review our plans to say, do we still have water in the next 20 years in Cape Town? Will we still have water in the next, how, you know, how much water do we have? How long will it last us? We do those studies every year. We revise those things. That is what municipalities are there to do. Okay, so there will always be enough water for you guys, as long as we keep on planning and uh, and both engineer Charles keep on working on these things. You guys will be good. And you guys I must join me. You guys must join me so that we give water to the people. Ne? <laughs> Thank you, Marco. <laughs> I'm only interested in inventing. Aita, do you have a question? All right. Are we done, guys, with our questions? We see that Uncle Charles didn't finish. Uh, should we finish next week? Yes. 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 I want to go yes. outside and play. Oh, yes. Uncle Charles, are you willing to come? even said that sitting around all day is not yeah. Okay. Adios, amigo. <laughs> yes. Okay, guys. So thank you very much. I know there's a lot, and today was more introductory. Maybe that's why it also seemed like a lot. I had to speak about other types of engineers, for example, and things like that. But when I come next week, we're just going to go through, talk about the road engineer guy, what he does, the structures guy, what he does. We'll talk a bit also about uh, the construction guys, because they are construction engineers who just construct only. Okay, But all those guys are all civil engineers. And by the end, when you guys are learning through school, I want you to know that there is so much you can do in civil engineering itself. And it pays very well. Am I lying, mate? It pays very well. <laughs> you guys are going to make money. And also, not only does it pay very well, you can run your own business and have your own company Goodbye. that does civil engineering. Yeah. And you make lots of money. Thank you very much, Dr. Sheps, for inviting me. And thank Goodbye. You. Thank you so much. Over to Faith. Faith. I have a question. Okay, Faith. I was saying that if it, water is very important, it's very important because you need to drink it like communication so that you can, so that it can help you very well and you sometimes you can clean it like with a cloth because it kind of has germs paper sand inside the water so that's why i'm saying water is very important okay it's oh interesting Tina? Yeah. My question is, can a civil engineer, do civil engineers work with com, com, constructions? <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. Architects and things like that. Do civil engineers work with? With architects and, and constructors. Yes, yes, yes. We work together a lot. Architects depend on civil engineers and civil engineers depend on architects. We work together a lot. So it's our, our field. You know, in our field, it's like, it's like a soccer team. You don't play alone. No matter how good you are, you need other guys to assist you. Okay? So that is what yes. we like. I may be a water engineer, but I'm a bad water engineer alone. I need other engineers to be with me in the game. Okay? So we work very closely together with architects. I'm a water engineer, but I depend on guys who do structural engineering. You know, we are a team. And in a team, everyone is important and everyone has a part to play. So yes, uh, Tine, we work very well together with other professions, with other disciplines. And we work together all the time as a team. Um. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Engineer Charles, for giving us your presentation. Um, we're going to have our last. We're, we're going to have our last prayer by Marco. Thanks, Faith. If it's Andrews. Thank you, God, for this lovely day. And may we understand as well as we have today next um, week. Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen. very much, Uncle Charles. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Cheers. See you next week. Can I have a question? Guys. See you next week. Bye. Marco, you have a question. Bye. Um, yes, thank you, Maita, for giving uh, Daddy some water. <laughs> um, what? Did, wait, how come each week there's like a host? 